C'est un message de Royal FM, la radio des auditeurs. Votre soupir à Muscast Oui, est belle, Bella Samari. It is 2 p.m. It is Royal Afternoon Edition. It is the 2 p.m. Newscast. Good afternoon, blessed people. Welcome to Royal Afternoon Edition, the 2 p.m. Newscast. Coming to you from Royal 88.4 FM. Alice Tovi. In Alice Tovi, this afternoon, African Cup of Nations 2021 trophy in Cameroon as the country gets set to stage the Africa's biggest football festival. It's a great moment for our country, a great moment for Cameroon football, and I hope that we will produce a good organization for the upcoming Africa Cup of Nations. So I hope that the Indomitable Lions will produce a great performances to leave this trophy. Stay tuned as we give you a special inside out of what happened today at the Ministry of Sport and Physical Education during the unveil ceremony with our sportsman Ben Emmanuel Kum. And still to come in this news, Cassia on the city dwellers assess the breakdown in social network services. Bizal Bima for Mapala Zita will be digging deep into that story. And out of the country, many prisoners are feared dead after a fire breakout in Burundi. Stay tuned for this and more. Total Energies Afcon Cameroon 2021, our special page in the news. Good afternoon once again. My name is Abel Bela Samari. We we'll open our news with our special page like you got it there from that jingle. And joining me in the studio is our own Ben Emmanuel Kuhn. Good afternoon to you, Emmanuel. Hello, Ebo. Good afternoon. Emmanuel, a tour of the trophy of the African Cup of Nations begins today in Yaoundé, 33 days to the continent's premium sporting event, which begins on the 9th of January 2022. The trophy was unveiled today during a ceremony at the Conference Hall of the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education in the presence of several sports personalities. You tell us more. <laughs> The atmosphere at the Ministry of Sport and Physical Education was electrifying with several sports personalities and supporters who turned out in impressive numbers to welcome the African Cup of Nations trophy. The gold-plated trophy arrived Yaoundé on Monday from Egypt and has been to 18 other countries before being received by the 2021 African hosts. Speaking during the ceremony to unveil the continent's most prestigious trophy, Cameroon's Minister of Sport and Physical Education, Narcis Molekombi, said it was a great moment for the entire country and hopes that the trophy will remain in Cameroon at the end of the 2021 AFCON on the 6th of February 2022. Fans and diehard supporters of the Indomitable Lions, who were present during the brief but colorful event, have begun to nurse hopes of seeing the national team lift the prestigious trophy. It is a great symbol to see that a trophy comes uh, to Cameroon and go back to another country. It will be very difficult to admit it. So I hope that the Indomitable Lions will produce uh, great uh, performances to leave uh, this trophy. The Cameroonians are very, very happy today to receive the trophy who are presented now. Our lion must do all the best to, to do that, that trophy stay in the house in Cameroon. We know that we have the best team. From the Ministry of Sport and Physical Education, the trophy was taken to the Star Building and presented to the Prime Minister, Head of Government Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute. From Yaoundé, the Afghan trophy would tour the cities to host the 2021 African Cup of Nations. They would make stops in Douala, Boyalimbe, Garwa, and Bafusam. Ben Emmanuel, and just to add, in, still in the African Cup of Nation, ahead of the African Cup of Nation, the Yaoundé Simalen Highway will be open to the public by the end of December 2021. Housing and Urban Development Minister Celestine Ketchakutex meets the statement as she visits the construction site. 
I'm very proud on what I've seen because uh, of when it was not easy. But uh, according to the planning of the company and to what uh, we have seen on the field, I'm sure that this um, wonderful highway that the head of the granted to Cameroon will be open for can. So people will be ensure that autoroute this highway will be open for can. I'm very proud on what I've seen this morning, but I've asked the company to be more and more attentive <laughs> to make sure that we don't waste Despite the rain, despite the rain continue, we are in the, the, the dry season, but uh, also rain are there. So I want them to make sure that we will not lose any minute to make sure that we open this highway for the card. Total Energies of Con Cameroon 2021. That was our special page in the news. We stay in sports, but this time to talk about elections in Fikafu to see the National Union for Cameroon Nyan footballers led by two-time African Cup of Nations winner Jeremy Jitap have disclosed that former Indomitable Lions players Ju, Denise Unana and Emmanuel Mabwan Kesak have both pulled out of the Fikafu presidential race to support the candidacy of Samuel Eto. The decision by the ex-footballers of Cameroon's icon 1990 World Cup squad signal claims came after frank, fraternal and constructive deliberation between presidential challengers yesterday. However, a letter addressed to Senafog yesterday, presidential aspirant Jules Denis Onana stated that he is yet to determine his stand a bit. The, he, he considered the idea of a coalition in support of Samuel Etofis loudly. Another presidential candidate, Justin Tago, has earlier withdrawn his candidacy to run for the election and rally behind Samuel Etofis. Let's recall that the elections to vote a new president of Faker Foot and Executive Committee members is scheduled for December the 11th, 2021 in Yaoundé. And still, in, to talk about the election in Faker Foot, the be up to the election at the helm of the Cameroon Football Federation, Faker Foot is getting even hotter with the various candidates putting in their best to gather votes from the delegates. Moreover, politicians are not left out as many in different ways reveal their position behind each candidate. But now, can the involvement of these politicians not influence the election results? That is a question Fimi Crispin put to a political analyst, and she now reports. The political analyst Alemkem Richard begins by explaining that most activities in the country are politically motivated, reasons why the Feka Foot election cannot be carried out without the influence of some politicians. This reflects the system of governance in which we find ourselves, that um, every appointment or every election has a political motivation. And this points to the fact that those governing in our governance system will never accept any person neutral to come into a higher position who is not from their political scene. I think that is actually what we are seeing now. Moreover, the huge sum of money given to Feka Foot by FIFA is also one of the reasons why politicians are attracted. Sports in general and football in particular is a financially heavy organism where a lot of money trafficking takes place. Can remember the billions of francs of CFA that FIFA gives to, to the country whenever we are involved in the World Cup. And then you can equally imagine the fight that has taken place in the professional league to oust the general Semenge from his post as president of the league. All these elements point to the fact that the governing party, the politicians, they always want somebody who will be at the head of Africa food to be a person that they can manipulate. According to the political analyst Alemkem Richards, the Feka Foot elections will for sure be greatly influenced as controversies keep rising. Fingri Crispin in that report. We stay in sports to say the women's national handball team of Cameroon faced Poland today in their final group C fixture of the 2021 Women's World Handball Championship ongoing in Spain. The handball lionesses must win today to be amongst the first three nations for the Group C to qualify for the next round of the competition. The African vice champions are currently bottom of their group pointless after suffering two defeats to Russia Handball Federation and Serbia. Cameroon's opponent today, Poland, are also yet to record their first point at the 32 nation tournament and currently occupy the third spot on the lock. The game between Cameroon and Poland 
begins at 6 p.m. local time. You are listening to Royal Afternoon Edition, the 2 p.m. newscast coming to you from Royal 88.4. Still to come in this newscast, we'll take you to talk about the collapse of social network in the country and its consequences. I had to meet up with some people to discuss very important affairs and we couldn't meet up because they tried reaching out to me and I could not be reached because the network was down. My number was not going through and I was not online. I did not even know how to go about it. So it was quite frustrating. <laughs> On to our uh, human interest stories, several traders of the Abombang market in the east region of Cameroon says they have recorded considerable material loss as a result of an early morning fire accident that caught the Abombang market today. As of now, the exact cause of the fire incident is still unknown. However, investigation has been initiated to establish the cause of the fire accident. Like I said, in one of our late stories, social network and internet connection have been restored in Yaoundé after an interruption of the optical fiber network. The breakdown affected most Cameroonians who find it difficult to carry out their daily activities. The company in charge of providing this optical fiber network blamed the incident on conspiracy and sabotage. A reporter, Bizal Bima, for caught up with some city dwellers to find out how this internet instability affected their daily activities. She compiled their view in the following report. For Banda, the internet instability observed in the country recently was quite disturbing and frustrating. I had to meet up with some people to discuss very important affairs and we couldn't meet up because they tried reaching out to me and I could not be reached because the network was down. My number was not going through and I was not online. I did not even know how to go about it so it was quite frustrating. Erin, a former user of the said internet provider, was not aware of the disruptions because he, he had earlier switched to another network due to the frequent instabilities and went in for better opportunities. Fortunately for me, I had switched to another network operator. There is a promotion they are doing where they have pieces of land for subscribers who buy a certain package. So I had tried my luck elsewhere hoping to win a piece of land. Fortunately for me, otherwise I would have been struggling with network. Gio, on his part, blames these internet providers and the services for the quality of their output, but is, however, contented with what he's receiving at the moment. It's really just laziness. You know, in a country like this, you want to work with all the mobile telecom companies because when one disappoints, you can rely on another. But, but I think it's also their policies, you know. I don't really think they've had very interesting services, and it's been a while since I checked on them. So uh, I may be missing out or not, but so far, I'm comfortable with the trash I'm receiving from other telecommunications companies. At a time when the country is preparing to host the AFCON 2021, we hope such internet instabilities will be adjusted. Indeed, and following the optical fiber network failure weakness on Monday, a reporter Mapala Zita questioned a telecommunication expert on what could have caused the issue and possible measures to take in order to avoid future failure. Take a listen to her report. NR Divine is a telecommunication engineer and he begins by explaining what caused the network instability. Fiber was vandalized and most operators were affected. Most operators depend on fiber infrastructure to connect the different regions using the counter backbone fiber. So when this fiber was destroyed, those who carry out this action, they have a good knowledge of the fiber network. They went to a manhole that connects so many operators, destroyed the cables, and so many nodes were disconnected. That's actually the cause of the network instability. Knowing what went wrong is good, but knowing how to avoid it repetition in the future is even better users might not have a great role to play but their voices can still be heard if they petition the government or push the government to secure these different manholes government supposed to have a security person positioned at that manhole to make sure nobody gets access to it Oh, one of the main reasons for this network disturbance is the fact that optic fibers are being controlled by the lone state-owned network company and our telecommunication engineer thinks if the government can decentralize that domain, it will avoid future unhealthy situations like the one witnessed on Monday. 
the government should give the possibility to other operators to deploy their own fiber. If the operators are given the possibility to deploy their own fiber, they will have control over this fiber. If they have the infrastructure, they are private companies. They will make sure those points are secured and will not have a situation like what we have yesterday. What happened yesterday was due to monopoly. We therefore pray and hope that such a situation does not repeat itself because its effects are really devastating. We stay in our society uh, news to say Yaoundé city dwellers are uh, for some time now witnessing the growing rate of inappropriate use of car horn by road users and jementa. You see many city dwellers refer this misuse of car horns as incivility in our society. <laughs> When one is crossing the road by the hospital site, when there are traffics, the misuse of this car horn can easily give a heart attack, according to this Yaoundé city dweller. It makes sometimes you get afraid. While you are walking on the road, you just hear a car just make, um, just make a noise. Some people, you find them having heart attack, which make them to fall. Some feel very bad, and it's not really good for some citizens. And sometimes the noise of those cars can make you, you find yourself doing another thing, and it, it may cause accidents. And the same reaction on this misuse of car horn is being shared by this taxi driver. I'm a taxi driver. I already noticed that our users are using carelessly. You will see somebody who is near a hospital, he will use the car horn while it is not advised. Even when a child is crossing a road, you don't have a right to use it again. Even when you are just behind somebody, you should not surprise the person with it. Recalling therefore when and how should car horn be used is important according to this driving school teacher. Yeah, you can use your horn when the passenger stops you. Just horn, bam, and he comes in. You drive. When somebody disturbs you, who stand in your front, if you just want your horn, bam, bam, if the person is not going, you don't know whether it's a downfall or something else. You have to wait a bit. But there are some who just horn as if they wanted to go to heaven. I don't know. A responsible taxi driver just horn at once. Anyone plying the road should therefore respect the code and ethics of the road. And we'll take you to this other story. Kamas return in the Logon and Shari division of the far north region of Cameroon after the death of 10 people in a dispute between fishermen and cattle rears in the Logon and Shari division, where we are, recall that the same incident occurred three months ago, leading to the governor of the far north region to intervene by deploying security forces to quell down the tension. Governor Midiya Wabakari has equally called on community leaders to synthesize the population on the virtue of peace and living together. Here now is the governor. Unfortunately, we have another conflict between cattle brothers and farmers. Yesterday, around 11 o'clock, a village called Miriam and Ulumsa, not far from Logon Berni, and so far we got eight persons die and 19 injured. But some of them are directed to the hospital. Right now, we have our forces going in the field to emphasize peace and uh, our authority also are there and also there is a commission in place to spread peace and living together we just call each and every one to avoid such conflicts to follow the direction given by the help the state that's to leave as brother and sister to be involved in integration and to get rid of any violence the situation to come back to normalcy Governor Mijiyawa Bakari speaking there and in the same light Jessica Tsangana discussed the problem of intertribal conflict in our society with some Cameroonians and the sociology. Take a listen to her report. They live with us in the same street, same building or even the same landing and yet we did not choose them between disputes and other types of nuisance. Relations between intertribal groups are not always obvious and today cohabitation often rims with problems. Whereas, whereas tie with those who live near us can be unifying sources of solidarity and mutual aid, family spirit is the best solution to live peacefully with other tributes, as Sandrine explains. We are all of us Cameroonians, so I behave with them as my family members, as my loved ones. So with the purpose of survivalism in the society, I cope with all the tribes I see now. If I'm with Muslim, I make sure that I do what they like and avoid things that they don't like so that for us to stay in good peace and harmony. 
On her part, Marceline thinks the desire to learn other tribes by all might help avoid inter-tribe conflict. I feel very re relaxed with other tribes given that their presence permits me to learn their cultures and languages which help to enhance living together and limit tribalism in our society. But why inter-tribal conflict on the first place? The sociologist Alum Nicolas answers. Respect the right of each individual is a problem for them. The poor level of education in those areas is one of the causes. And again, the level of poverty also is one of the problems in those areas that will escalate the conflict in between them. You know, when people are struggling for survival and definitely they are not able to meet their daily needs and when at the slightest mistake and he's thinking of his interests and definitely it will lead to the conflict in between them. The sociologist Alium Nicolas goes further to give some solutions to solve or reduce intertribal conflicts. The solutions are many. The government can intervene by maybe providing economic relief to those areas, and that alone cannot be sufficient. Since the people in those areas are involved in uh, maybe rearing and farming, government should assist them in the modern method of farming or maybe rearing the cattle, and that will avoid the conflict in between them. And again, education should be given a priority in those areas. Nonetheless, we hope the Cameroon law has put in place articles governing inter-tribe conflicts to avoid constant war among tribes henceforth. Jessica Tsangana in that report, a way from our society, a story will take you to talk about governmental news in this edition of our newscast. The Minister of Youth Affairs and Civic Education, Monona Foso, has presided over the Youth Connect Week as well as the launching of preparatory activities that will mark the 2022 Extended Youth Week. The Guardian also saw the involvement of youth groups, association, and partners with a harmonized national program. The sixth edition of the National Day of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises is underway in Douala Littoral Region of the country with more than 500 participants who are reflecting on ways of improving the avail availability and improve and employment of the quality of meat in, in Cameroon, as well as looking into the contribution of small and medium-sized enterprises to the imports substitution policy of Cameroon. The three days event is presided over by the Minister of Small and Medium Size and Handicraft, Ashi Basiliken the Third. Here now is the Minister. SMEs are an important actor in the implementation of the import substitution strategy. As you are aware, SMEs account today for nearly 41% of the gross domestic products. And uh, we believe that in mobilizing SMEs who are currently in the agro-industry sector, for example, these can contribute alleviating all the export earnings. And I am quite convinced that SMEs having identified precisely some specific incentives that they deserve will really contribute to the development of the import substitution policy in our country. Cameroon joins their peers worldwide today to observe the International Civil Aviation Day installed by the United Nations with the aim to recognize the social, economic and development benefits of aviation and international air traveling, well as, as uh, Cameroonians the, IS, the ICIO role in safety, efficiency and uniformity in the global aviation and in line with this day, a civil aviation expert in the person of Davison De Ati tells us the importance of social economic development of states through civil aviation. Take a listen to what he has to say. The importance of aviation in economic and social uh, development in a society cannot be overemphasized. I believe and we know that the modern world cannot develop, cannot go very far without aviation. It's a pity that uh, Cameroon as a country has taken some drawback in recent years. In the yesteryears, we were far more involved with our aviation and suddenly it has become as if aviation did not really matter anymore which is sad i will take you to talk about this parliamentary information the network of parliamentarians for the promotion of human rights and cyber security 
is holding a briefing and information sharing session with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees today at the National Assembly. The president of the Network of Parliamentarians for the Promotion of Human Rights and Cybersecurity, Honorable Zontrol Harris, affirmed that information received from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees will permit lawmakers be better evaluate the situations of refugees in Cameroon and seek more sustainable solutions to their plight. Take a listen to Caesar Shilomonbo, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees Deputy Representative to Cameroon. It's a, a very, very progressive law on the refugees, giving uh, refugees the same rights uh, uh, national Cameroonian. So you cannot find this kind of uh, disposition in other countries. So that is why I'm saying it's the best in terms of the law. Is the, the refugees, they are among the refugees you have people with uh, different uh, uh, experience, different, uh, um, I mean, skills. You have doctors, uh, you have uh, teachers, you have people with masters and so on. And then to put them aside is, um, I can say, we are missing something because there will be, uh, there will not be an actor of development, but there will be uh, a burden for the country. So why not to use this, uh, uh, I mean, expertise that you have in the country? Uh, I remember myself when I was uh, young, uh, it was um, uh, refugees from uh, Haiti who were our teachers. So uh, we have. Uh, why not to do the same uh, for, for now? That, that, that is why we are saying, let us use them, let us include them in the, uh, the, the, the program so that they cannot be dependent uh, on uh, uh, humanitarian aid. We take you out of the country we begin in Africa, precisely in Mozambique, where more than 2 million people in Mozambique are at risk of acute hunger. The government has said this is more cru critical in the jihadist hit northern province of Cabo de Gagbu, where 900, 900 and 9,000 341 people are at risk. Maputo City has the lowest number of people at risk with 58,242. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Food Program had earlier warned of a rise in acute food insecurity in that part of the country. And still out of the country, many prisoners are feared death after a fire break out in the main prison in Burundi's capital, Jigaga. To today, images shared online show bodies of people though to be prisoners. Authorities in Burundi have not yet given details on the incident. A prisoner who survived the fire said that the true the fire broke out at around 4 a.m. local time in the prison sleeping hall while many were still asleep. The cause of the fire accident is yet to be determined. Still out of the country, a Kenyan police officer has shot dead his wife and five other people and then killed himself in Kabedi town outside the capital Nairobi. Police Constable Benson Lambasi is said to have asked his wife to close her shop and the couple went home where neighbors had shots being fired in the early hours of today. He then shot uh, out his door and shot at seven other people, then took his own life. Five of them who died and two are being treated at the National Hospital out there in Kenya. We come back to take you to our summary. <laughs> And let's welcome Anne Priestley Kupitek, who is here with a summary of this newscast in the French language. Good afternoon to you, Anne. Good afternoon, Ebel Bella Samari. Perturbation du réseau téléphonique, les Camerounais se plaignent de plus en plus de la qualité du service offert par les opérateurs de téléphonie mobile. Ils dénoncent également d'énormes pertes. Ces incidents sont pour la plupart du temps liés aux ruptures partielles de la fibre optique. Dans les quartiers, la cohabitation entre les voisins n'est pas toujours chose aisée. Les commérages et les malentendus provoquent des querelles, des bagarres et même des procès. Pour un meilleur vivre ensemble, les valeurs de tolérance et de pardon sont recommandées. 
À l'international Burundi, un incendie fait de nombreux morts et des blessés à la prison centrale de Jitega. Selon des sources à l'intérieur du lieu, les flammes ont débuté dans la nuit aux environs de 4 heures ce mardi 7 décembre. Tous les hangars ont brûlé à l'exception de ceux réservés aux femmes. En sport, Cannes Cameroun 2021, le trophée de la compétition séjourne déjà à Yaoundé. Il a été réceptionné ce matin par le ministre des Sports et de l'Éducation physique, par ailleurs président du COCAN, Nassi Samuel Kombi. Anity Swedas Summer Reform Art Priestley Cupid that will wrap up this edition of our 2 p.m. newscast. More newscasts will be yours at 6 p.m. A bilingual version between Annie Lizette Ambassa and Bizal B. Mafo. Join the different newscasts at 6 a.m. in the English language, 8 a.m. in the French language, Royal Midi, 12 noon, and Royal Afternoon Edition, the 2 p.m. newscast. The team keeping you company this afternoon is made up of Carol Pudanti and Teresa Copyright Clark. You wish came with our sound engineer, link with our video editor on our Facebook page, Raya FM Cameroon. The news was produced by Finger Crispin with editorial question coming from Jean Passé and Salah. Coordination was done by our station manager, Bertrand Owuna. General supervision was ensured by Reverend Pastor Emmanuel Nobisai. For presentation, my name is Abel Bila Samari. Up next, Orifel Act 2 with Roger Kek. Good afternoon and stay blessed. <laughs>